So let's just kind of pause and take a look at, at what this is. It looks like just shards are smashed together, but remember what it looked like when it was fully scrambled. Everything was willy-nilly, it looked like a big spiky ball. Now you can see that it's starting to take the shape of our cube, shape of our puzzle. Now I, I put the corners in so it makes it look even more that way, but it still looks like you have these pieces that are just haphazardly glued on here, when in reality, um, they have a very specific place and very specific orientation. And I've got to be careful because now I'm starting to look at it like it was a cube with this as the side, but I still have to remember it's an axis cube. This is the actual side over here. So it might not serve me well to keep it in this position because it might serve more to confuse. So edge placement is done uh, much the way you do with any mod. So you have one edge that comes in over here. <laughs> Sounds of Pac-Man in the, in the background. So this guy is gonna come over to here. So let's put him in place. We're gonna now, now break our cube or pseudo cube form. Just have to make sure I have my perspective here. Move this across down here. And actually breaking the pseudo cube form or the end cube form is actually gonna help me so that I don't forget what I'm doing. Put this over here, and in an attempt to maintain something that resembles a perspective, let's see if we can't figure out where this is supposed to go. Okay, straight down here, I think. So, turn, 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 and this is continued exactly the same way. Just bear in mind there's two shapes and two ver types of edges that are here. Make sure this is lined up correctly and turn. And again, it's the pure um, moving of this that makes it so much easy, easier. So this simply comes down to here. So turn. So this is one type of edge that we're completing here. Turn. Turn. Turn and bring it on up. So now this is in. The other type of edge is this. And then we have to find the two on the other side here. Here, so let's go over here. Turn. Turn. Turn and Bring it up, and now putting the other one in. Turn it down, and it does. Turn, 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 and up we go. So we've got this type of edge and this type of edge, and I'm gonna keep doing this until I get to the last two edges. Okay, so we continue on. We've got a couple more of these edges to do. I've got these two in place. So I think this guy's gonna fit over here. So let's put this in position. Turn, turn, turn. And turn this in over here. Now bring this down. Now here's a question that I have for you as I'm doing this, something to consider. Right now I'm doing this by the usual technique, the usual method, which is a uh, a reductive strategy. The question to consider is, um, although I'm solving this with a reductive strategy, I've shown and demonstrated a layer-by-layer -layer strategy. And my question is, would that be interesting to see with this guy? If I were to do a layer-by-layer -layer strategy on a multi-puzzle, multi-dimensional, a multi-layered puzzle rather, dimensional, um, that's also a mod or a super cube. Haven't done that yet. And that might be interesting because we wouldn't, by not doing the reduction method, we'd actually be doing the centers and the edges at the same time. I gotta make sure my alignment here is correct. There we go. Turn and turn. So that might be an interesting thing to do, interesting thing to try. Now there's this, I have to find the other 
edge piece here, and that is right over here. Turn that in line, make sure that we're gonna sacrifice something that is worth sacrificing, which is this guy here, and we bring it down across down and turn all the way and up we go okay step by step what do we've got what have we got left so maybe one of these guys so I've got these two which belong with these two over here I've got the green one here's my sacrificial lamb turn turn and put this in here. Now, I can't imagine that watching this is as fun as doing it. Turn, especially when it's such a smooth moving puzzle. This was made by my Ghost Cube contact and many of you guys' Ghost Cube contact. And this gets turned up. Okay, once I have that in, now this belongs here, potentially because there's another green one that looks just like that. Turn and turn. So among the six layer mods, I actually find that the axis ones are the hardest to keep straight. There's something about these little pieces that have to be kept in mind. Turn, so this fits nicely over here. I think as we start to get more into ghost-like structure, we get harder and harder. And the axis is the closest thing to a ghost structure as any of the other puzzles. So this is all good. Now we find a little white one, which is here. Turn, turn. And turn. Okay. Sacrifice this one. Down, turn, turn. Turn and up. Okay, so let's take stock in what we've got. I believe we're now down to the last two edges of this puzzle. Now you can see that it's it's more ordered than it was before. We're still in a scrambled form and we haven't reduced all of our edges, but you can see that it doesn't have that shattered look, that classic axis shattered look. So now let's consider what we have to do. I can see these are all lined up. So if you have your own six layer mod, understand that when I do the algorithm, to cause flipping here, whatever's on the side that I move away from, that's gonna stay put. I kinda of want this to stay put. And I wanna to try to eliminate parity as much as I can. So I'm gonna flip these two. Now when that happens, this center is gonna flip. So by the end of this, this should all be fine. There shouldn't be any um, placement issues with that requiring any Red Bulls to flip them around. Because if I do Red Bull, it's gonna cause some potential flipping of, um, of uh, centers. This would be flipped over here. Now because this has no issues of equivocation that you shouldn't run into problems with that. The puzzle knows what it is and what it is not supposed to do. But I'm going to move this over to here and then do R F I U R I F I'm still amazed at how smooth this, this guy moves and all, all that's fine. Okay, so we basically have a fully reduced six layer axis puzzle. So for those of you who hung in there with me with that, here is your prize. Now, solving it is just like solving an axis cube. Well, sort of, it's an even layer axis cube. So let's go ahead and orient our centers here so that they're all facing the proper way. I've already done this. I can see this edge is already in, so that's good. This is going to come into here to create my new pseudo yellow or orange side, rather. Bring this over here. Bring this over here. And I think we've just about got it. And this over here. Okay. So we're once again getting our pseudo cube back, but don't lose perspective on that. Remember what is and what is not our side. So I'm going to start off with this because this edge is already in. Now we find the blue edge. We've got one over here. So I'm going to move this down. And again, we have not reached the true challenge of this puzzle yet. And I'm just going to line this up where this can come into the proper conjunction with the edge here. 
Not yet. So turn this like so. Bring it in, and still not yet. So that means I have to turn this the other way. So I'm going to angle it like this, and now I'll angle it up like that, and move it in. So we're good. And I might as well move this back in. Okay. Although I kind of risk making it look too much like a cube right now. So we're good here, here. Now this, this is going to be one that looks like this, as you can see. But it's going to have blue, yellow, and, well, blue and yellow. Move it down. Put this in configuration. Proper configuration. Which I believe this comes up to here. And now slide this guy here and bring it up. And there we go. So in, in, in. And now I'm looking for this, which is going to be yellow and orange. Turn, turn. And there we go. And up you go. Okay, so these are all the edges of our first layer here. We have to put a little yellow one over here. Is it on the bottom? And no, it's probably up here somewhere, right over here. So do we have the blue, orange, and white? Blue, orange, and white, we've got that over here. So turn, 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 and up, which perform two functions, put this corner in and, and knock this yellow one down, which I know belongs over here. Now I don't have false equivocation of, the tri of these triangles because they're not exactly shaped the same. So if I move this into here, I have to decide is this oriented correct, and it does not appear to be so. I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of hangs out a little bit. Or does it? Let me see. Yeah, so that, that hangs out a little bit. So we don't end up with a typical axis false equivocation with apparent parity at the end, because I'll know exactly what it's supposed to look like. And I find that the higher order versions of these puzzles generally don't make me run into that trouble because uh, the shape is a little bit different. So is this okay here? It's a little hard to tell, but I'm gonna say it's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's good. Okay, orange comes into here. Need a little orange. Don't see it there, which means it must be somewhere else. Right over here. So a little blue comes here. There it is. Snagged a little bit there. Now again, don't let the box shape fool you. We are not ready to call this a cube yet. Is this in? What do you think? Looks pretty good. And now the little tiny white piece. Oh, orange rather, right over here. Turn. Turn. Does that look right? Uh, sure. Okay. So this is our first layer over here. Good, 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 and good. So now we turn it over here, remembering that this is our top layer, and we put all of this in. So this belongs here. So the usual algorithm for the left side, otherwise known as algorithm number one with a layer by layer approach. Doesn't seem to want to move, there we go. UI, LI, U, L, U, F, UI, FI, and all is right with the world. Now what else we have? I think this white one can find a nice home over here. Same algorithm. Turn. Bang. Zoom. Pow. Splat. Crunch. Clink. Kerplop. That's good. Can I see a red and blue? No, I can't. Oh, I can, right here. So I have to substitute that with a green, well, yellow and green, which I've got over here. So this is gonna come down like this, same side, turn, turn, 
turn, turn. Splat. Clink. Clink. And clunk. Okay. Now we've got this on the correct side, I hope. Turn, 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 bang, zoom, pow, and splat. Okay, now the last layer. So let's pause a little bit and take a look at what we've got. This is our partially completed down to the last layer puzzle. Being a even layer, of course, you have to make sure there's no parity. So the first step is to see what's upside down and what's right side up. Well, I can easily check that. So this is actually upside down. So this is upside down. And this is upside down. So these two are upside down. Let's see if I can remember that. This goes, this does go here, so this is right side up. Upside down, upside down, right side up. Now is this one right side up? And the answer is no, it's upside down. So that means I have three that are upside down and one that's right side up, which means I do have that kind of parity. Just to bring that out a little bit more, let me go ahead and do this, F, R, U, R, I, U, I, F, I, and I'm just permuting these around just to show it a little bit more. So this you can see is right side up. This, if I move it here, you can see this is right side up. So right side up, right side up. This one you can see is right side up, and this one is upside down. So I have that three up, one down parity that happens with this. So I've got to get out of that. So how am I going to do that? So to do this, as you know, this is the Red Bull algorithm. One of the very first applications of this before realizing it that realizing that it can get you out of a whole bunch of other types of parodies. But I'm going to split it down here and this will become my R move. I have to make sure I keep my perspective here. I'm moving like this. Okay. This becomes my R move, and this becomes my L move. And at the end of the day, these will all be flip-flopped in relation to each other. So let's see if I can navigate through this without messing this up too much. 2R, 2B, 2U, just remember that these both together are L. L. Two up. R I. Two up. R. Two up. Two F. R. Two F and hoping I didn't mess it up. L I. To B, to R, and let me tell you, the Red Bull algorithm on a six-layer axis cube using um, two and two is no picnic. But at the end of the day, with enough concentration, this is now right side up, this is right side up, and these other two are also, as you can see, right side up. This one is obvious too. Now that I've done that, what I want to do is I want to permute these around. So this is already in place, so I kind of got lucky, maybe. What's going to happen with this next algorithm is either 
they're all going to end up in place or just two are and then I have to do some fancy ninja like footwork to flip two. Well, let's go ahead and do our R U R I U R to U R I not yet, so I think it's very hopeful. R U R I U R to U R I and we got lucky because these are all here. This isn't in, this isn't in, this isn't in, and this isn't in. So we have to permute the corners around and we're almost there. U R U I L I U R I U I L or something like that. Okay, I was worried we'd run into trouble, but this is in and none of these are in. So we know we did okay with our preparation phase, with our center rotations. We don't have 90 degree rotations. And again, I'll maintain if you ever see two edges in place or corners in place and two out, you have a rotation of one of your centers by 90 degrees and you have to rotate the whole thing. Luckily, we don't have to do that. U R U I L I U R I U I L. Okay, so here is everything is where they should be. Now, this apparent parity, because we don't have false equivocation of the rotation of these corners, we can actually see the hidden problem here. You can tell that this is not rotated where it needs to be. It, you see it's out. Now if this looked the same in every direction, this would look like it's perfectly fine, but I can tell this isn't where it rotated correctly, and this isn't rotated correctly, and this isn't rotated correctly. So none of these are where they need to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start off with these and work my way all around until I get to this last one. So I'm going to R-I-D-I, R-I, R-I-D-I, R-D it into submission. R-I. D I R D. Now I've got to pay close attention to make sure that I'm ready to move on to the next one once this is properly aligned. R I R D. We can examine it here. Do we like it? Uh, kind of hard to say. I'm going to say yes. I'll realize that it's not quite right at the end if this rotating in doesn't fit. So we keep going. All right. Now, because it just took one stroke to do that one, this next one should take three. C I R turn 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 turn. So predictably, it's not in yet. It's going to take another one before it's in. And if that's the case, then I know from the parity of this puzzle that all is well. So this should be in now. And uh, sure, I'm going to say it is. Turn this green one around. Now I'm going to turn this around. R I D I R D R I D I R D. I'm going to say that's in, and if everything has been correct, I have to do two RIDIRDs to get this into place in order for it to be symmetric and make sense. So RIDIRD, RIDIRD, that's one. And this next one should get this doggone thing solved. DI R D R I D I and lastly after all of our work D this gets moved back and we're done. Six layer axis cube has been conquered. We can take a look and see if we like where all the corners are and we do. Once again a very very fun 
puzzle to solve because it's it's once again perspective bending, but the movement is very, very smooth. Ah. So, so there you have it. So now this can take its seat amongst its brethren. We've got the six layer and the five layer. We'll kind of even that out so that the color scheme looks something alike. The strangely out of place four layer. Let's see if we can't measure that up here. Color scheme is about the same. Of course, our original, the uh, three layer. Match that up also. Color scheme is a little different, but that's okay. And of course, the newest addition to the family here, the two layer. Kind of a neat little, neat little puzzle here, which I'll be demonstrating as well. There we go. And the two layer. So, you know, remember when you make an axis cube, basically what it is, is you take a three by three and you chop it down to this guy over here, which is a hexagonal um, die pyramid. Then what you do, and if you notice the similarities here, if you look at um, the individual sides, so here's here's a side over here, and compare it to say a side over here, uh, you can see similarity with this corner over here and an edge, which is one color. This is two. This would be another corner, and these would be another edge corner, edge, corner, edge. And you see this familiar X over here? That's that's uh, equivalent to this. So basically, you took a three by three, cut it down to a hexagonal die pyramid. You then built it back up again, so the center came up to here, and uh, this corner got shaved down. This got uh, kind of shaved down and flattened, as did this, so that you built it back up to a cube. So it started out as a cube, became a hexagonal die pyramid, and then built it back up again to make a cube, so you went from hexagonal die pyramid to an axis cube, and you did that with um, with each one of those. Now, what happens if I do my hexagonal pyramid, build it back up to a cube, and then shave it back down to an axis um, puzzle? So, in other words, you start from uh, you start from here, and instead of shaving it down as a hexagonal die pyramid with a true side, you shave it down to a hexagonal die pyramid with a salt, with a false side which is this. So if you take from hexagonal die pyramid to axis cube, then from axis cube back down hexagonal py uh, die pyramid, you get this. This is actually a, um, uh, this is by uh, um, Raphael uh, Jaluni. This is an axis hexagonal die pyramid. Turns uh, a little bit differently. Well, it turns the same. It's still a three layer mod, but the organization is different. And what you've done is you've taken this side here, and you've cut that down to become your, um, uh, well, I guess your false side would be up here somewhere. So you've kind of taken that down and uh, cut it down. Of course, if you take your hexagonal die pyramid, build it up, and then move it off to the side like this, and then shave it back down um, and build it back up as a cube, you end up with your ghost cube. Looks a little bit like a hexagonal die pyramid, but has actually been skewed like this so that it needs to be moved in these directions in order to uh, in order to make an actual move. Let's see if I can put it here. Looks like I gotta play with this a little bit more. There it is. So if you solve it off center like that shave it down, and then bring it back, you end up with a ghost cube. Well, what if you then take that ghost cube, and once again, in the cube form, shave this down as a hexagonal die pyramid? Well, what you then get is a ghost hexagonal die pyramid, which, just like any other ghost puzzle, turns over here, but to make another turn, you have to turn it off kilter, and then you can turn it again. So, the possibilities are as limitless as your imagination, starting off with the same concept, hexagonal die pyramid to cube, from cube off center to ghost cube, taken on back down to a 
axis hexagonal die pyramid or take your ghost and turn it into a ghost hexagonal die pyramid. So they're all sort of offshoots from each other. And of course the inevitable question is what about a seven layer? Well, it's my understanding that a seven layer is probably not gonna happen because it was, you can see that we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller until pretty soon you're just not gonna be able to shave the pieces down again. But we will kind of show these different variations off to the side here, off to the side just by way of demonstration. And maybe we'll put it in the foreground. Anyway, this is our family tree and our extended family tree. Kudos to the designer for designing such a fascinating, intricate, well-moving, and nice, playable, complex, multi-layered puzzle. Thanks for watching.